video, we'll be going over the IRS Interactive Tax Assistant tool that helps individual taxpayers determine whether or not they can claim the Retirement Savings Contributions Credit on Schedule R of their tax return. So you'll need some basic information. You're going to need your adjusted gross income, your tax filing status, whether or not you can be claimed as a dependent on another taxpayer's tax return, and then dates of distributions from any retirement plans, if uh, there are any. So this tax tool is supposed to take about 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and jump in and, and uh, begin. So we're going to help determine for the uh, 2023 tax year whether or not you will be eligible. Uh, so first question is, what is your, your filing status? There are five different statuses that you can choose from. Single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of household, and a qualifying surviving spouse with a dependent child. If you do have questions, uh, there are certain terms or phrases that are highlighted in blue. Uh, anytime you have a question about one of those phrases, simply click the link and, we'll, and it will take you to a separate page where the IRS defines that specific phrase. For example, filing status determines your tax rates, the amount of your deductions, and then your eligibility for certain tax credits. So let's say we're doing this as a married a uh, couple filing a joint return. So uh, the first question is, are any of you, are, are you and your spouse claiming any of the exclusions or deductions listed below? Uh, the first three, the foreign earned income exclusion, the foreign housing exclusion, and the, and the foreign housing deduction are claimed on IRS form 2555. And then the, the next two, or on separate tax uh, returns or forms. So let's just say for the time being, yes, we are. So is the amount of your adjusted gross income plus these exclusions that might be added back, is that $73,000 or less? Well, let's say no. If no, then you can't claim the credit. Let's go back and change that answer to yes. Did you make a voluntary contribution or an elective deferral to a qualified retirement plan, an IRA, a 401k, 457 plan? Let's just say yes. Did your spouse make a voluntary contribution? We'll say yes. So what is your date of birth? So this is going to help us determine whether or not you as a taxpayer may be eligible. Let's say that you claim that you are, that your birthday is April 4th, 1959. It's going to ask your spouses and for expediency purposes, we'll say something very similar, 58. So the next question is, can someone else claim you as a dependent on their, their tax return? Uh, generally speaking, if they're providing over 50% of your support, then they may be claiming you as a dependent. But in this situation, let's just say no. Same for your spouse. Uh, we were not full-time students during the tax year, but if you wanted to understand that, uh, there is an IRS definition of what full-time student means. So did you take a distribution from an IRA? qualified plan or retirement plan uh, either during the tax year, uh, before the due date of your tax return, or in the two years prior. So in this case, uh, you would be uh, eligible. You would actually file IRS Form 8880, which is the uh, form for qualified retirement savings contributions. I believe at the beginning of the video, I uh, mistakenly said Schedule R, my mistake. It's actually IRS Form 8880. I'll put a link to that uh, video and article in the show notes for you. Let's go back and run through 
another scenario, maybe where your spouse took a distribution. So all of these are terms uh, that have different meanings. So Roth conversion, non-taxable rollover or trans uh, transfer loans. Let's just say that your spouse's distribution did not include any of those. Uh, the distributions were not as much as the contributions, um, but they were as much as your spouse's uh, contributions. So in this case, you would be qualified, but your spouse would not be qualified. And then you would walk through the calculation on form 8880. So if your distributions are equal to or greater than the amount of your contribution, and again, what is a testing period? Let's go ahead and take a look at that testing period. So for the purpose of this tax credit, it's the period after the end of the year and before the due date, and then the two, the entire tax year, and then the two tax years before that. So for 2023, that would be all of 2023, tax years 2021 and 2022, and then up to the filing deadline of your 2023 tax return. In this case, it would be April 18th, 2024. Okay, so um, that that's all we have. Uh, uh, one thing that I will uh, kind of it, recommend is that as you go through this, once you get to the point where you feel satisfied with your answer, go ahead and print the screen. Uh, you can see that there is a little button down at the bottom that says print. And what you want to do is you want to go through each of these uh, questions to make sure that you answered them uh, without mistakes. So if you made a mistake, you can see how easy it is to go back in this tax tool, correct the mistake, and then see what the outcome is. Uh, sometimes you might have to clear the cookies. You might have to exit the tool and then come back in in a different window. Uh, but you should make sure that uh, your final printout uh, answers the questions exactly the way uh, you intended. And then print that out and keep it in your tax records. Uh, that way, if for some reason your, your tax return is audited, uh, you'll have a frame of reference. Uh, and even if you made a mistake, uh, the fact that you're keeping this in your records and you're showing the examiner your decision-making process uh, kind of indicates uh, that you're paying attention, that you're trying, that you're not just completely disregarding the tax code and trying to claim credits that you're not otherwise entitled to. Uh, there are tax penalties that can be imposed by the IRS for uh, you know, frivolous use of the tax code, uh, accuracy-related tax penalties, things of that nature. So. Uh, you want to steer clear of those, you know, mistakes are acceptable. Uh, the worst case scenario, if it's just an honest mistake, should be uh, that your examiner recalculates your tax liability, adds some interest uh, that is required by law, and then you pay the difference. What should not happen is that you have additional penalties imposed on top of that. So uh, just be careful and um, make sure that you uh, are, are taking the appropriate steps when you're trying to claim tax credits and other tax benefits. As I mentioned, we'll put links to uh, the, the forms uh, and other relevant videos that, that we mentioned during this uh, uh, video. So uh, if you like our articles, please subscribe to our uh, newsletter, which you can find by uh, going to our website, uh, teachmepersonalfinance.com. You can find just about any tax form that we've written an article simply by typing it into the search bar, and then uh, you can enjoy our article. Uh, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, as always, uh, please post them in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.